Hi, <clears throat> this is John Fino on Blender Artists. You can find me as Touricity, and I'm going to present today to you something I've been working on for what well, seems like forever, but it's probably just been about a year. <clears throat> it's a project that I'll be presenting this uh, November in St. Paul, Minnesota at the National Association for Interpretation National Workshop or Conference. Uh, what essentially that means is it's a national conference for museum interpreters, historic site interpreters, uh, national parks, etc., things like that. And so what I am trying to do is uh, I have a couple of things, and this is part of the, the whole overall project, is to reconstruct a place that is still exists and that you could visit but is very difficult to get to so most people can get to it and so that's to show off uh, what blender and the blender game engine can do and it was also a very good time to for me to learn how the blender game engine works and uh, improve my skills in modeling and texturing and the like so what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick walkthrough this is what's better known as Scott's Hut, the, a British Antarctic expedition of 1910 to 1914. The winter before they made their push to the pole and Captain Scott and four other uh, four others get died on the way back, they lived the winter, the sunless winter, in this hut with 25 men. And so the idea here is that we can do a walkthrough. So what you're seeing then, let me press play is the initial menu. It's pretty simple. A couple of animated buttons with uh, transparencies. None of them work right now except for enter the hut at Cape Evans and that's where we'll go. So you click on it, left click. Takes a moment to load. Uh, the interior is, this is running uh, GLSL um, which I know isn't, uh, doesn't run on all computers but it's a basic first person uh, WASD movement. <clears throat> we have lights, 12 lights. Um, it's about 12 or 13,000 polys and about 19,000 vertices. And the idea is you can just walk through and you can learn more about the place and the people who live there. So, as a first example, when the mouse, which we don't see up, put just probably a crosshairs in the center so that you know what you're pointing at, hovers over one of these hidden nameplates, I'm calling them. It appears. Uh, this one only does that right now, but if we kind of wander over here, I haven't, you'll notice I haven't baked an ambient occlusion or shadows. That's, uh, that's coming. I haven't, I have a lot you notice all the shelves are empty, there are uh, certain large objects missing, like the door frame and the door texture for the front door. Uh, but mostly it's getting there. So anyway, we came over here. So if you hover over this bunk, you find out who slept there. It gives you his title. Left click on it and up pops an overlay screen. And then um, I'll have instructions for this, kind of a, another overlay screen between the initial main menu and going into the hut just to kind of give a brief explanation of where you are, what you're going, and how to, how to work things. It's, it's all pretty simple, but just so people know. And then you right click on it, it disappears. The only thing I haven't figured out yet is uh, how to make the mouse look script stop, but um, the gentleman who wrote the mouse script is helping me work on that. Part of the reason I'm doing this is to show that Blender Game Engine can do a lot of stuff and all the things that I'm trying to include here were done with logic bricks so that to show that you can get started in uh, this sort of historic site recreation without you know you can just be an artist uh, and you don't have to learn how to code immediately what I've also learned is that you really have to learn how to code Python to really do a lot of cool stuff but you can get away with a lot using just game bricks uh, we have a number of different objects, a heating system. Uh, this is all reconstructed from photographs that I found of the original expedition and uh, more recent ones. A gramophone that when you press P plays song 
that they certainly may have had it during their expedition. We know they were listening to that particular artist, but um, I don't know if that song was on there in their <laughs> playlist. Um, but we won't play it right now. I'll save it to the end because I haven't figured out how to turn it off yet. Uh, how to exactly toggle the sound. And so the different crew members have different bunks. Uh, I, this project is due November 12th when I'm making the presentation, so I don't know if I'll have all the detailed information about all 25 crew members who lived in this hut. Um, but I did all the... I did all the texturing, all the, all the, the, the modeling. Um, you can see nice little shine here from the GLSL materials. I'm hoping at some point to retexture these and put up the, the really cool and interesting models that I created on BlendSwap, but I have to retexture them because I've been using CG textures heavily and I didn't realize that you can't uh, Creative Commons use Creative Commons with the ones that they've created, or with the textures that they that you get from them. So, good to know. Know for next time. This is uh, the dark room that the expedition photographer used. I'll just scoot around here. Uh, Scott's cubicle. You see he had a little bit of better space than everybody else. Um, missing table legs, but there's a lot of things missing. And if we kind of go back and forth, you can see those pretty GSL, GLSL materials. Uh, you'll one one of the interesting things that I discovered is that you, for many simple textures like this, that you derive the normals from the texture, the color texture. You don't need to create a color map. Let Blender do it for you. There's a little checkbox, and it will interpret the color map to give you what the normals are. Now, it's not perfect, especially if you are pretty, if you have a very complex texture, but it's not bad for being very simple. And one more section back here. And we'll wander back up to the front and I'll show off. Press P. I don't know if you can hear that, but now it's on the right speaker. I'll turn. Left speaker. So the 3D audio, which was very simple to do, was is really cool. And so the further away we get, the quieter it gets. Um, and we'll wander back from the officer's area back to the mess deck where the men lived. And there you have it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little walkthrough. Comments and suggestions are welcomed. And have a nice day.